Hi, welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. This is Marcia. In today's video, we're going to be making photo spot cards and journaling cards to go in our junk journals, or in this case, it's going in a scrapbook album that is a custom order that I'm doing for a friend. So, to get started, this is the supplies you're going to need. Four by six white cardstock or a little bit heavier um, paper, but I would classify this more in art paper. It's not heavy, heavy like a cardstock, but it's not light like copy paper. It came in the scrapbook album, so I have no idea what weight this paper is, but I'm giving you my um, perspective on it by feeling it and comparing it with cardstock and copy paper and I can definitely tell you it is in between that so whatever weight that would be is what this is so I cut these already down to four by six and you can see I have a lot because I have 40 pages that I'm going to be making these for to go in the scrapbook album you will also need a glue stick I use the scotch brand it's permanent I love this type you will need a cutting tool, straight edge cutting tool. You will need your dioxide inks in whatever color you like to use. And you will need some book pages. So now this is actually a journal that a friend gave me. And I've just been keeping it. It was so cute. It's a teddy bear journal. And I was needing cream colored cardstock. So let me show you the base of this journal, the pages, the papers that I'm using. So this paper pack, if you watched yesterday's video, um, I showed you uh, the custom scrapbook album that I'm doing. And these were the papers that I picked out. So you can see they're very, very colorful. They're not neon colors. They're very subdued, but they're busy. <laughs> So, I mean, I love it. I mean, it's like, you know, because when you're going to be using them in a scrapbook album as a background page or in a journaling, uh, junk journal, and you just want to add some life to it, you know. So we do so much of, you know, flowers and, and pastels and shabby and even vintage. And we go, you know, the earth tones, boho. But this is really, you know, a, an animal print is really, really fun. And I, I just love that. And she's a fun person, and I knew she would love it. So I'm enjoying it myself. And it's not, that's not my style. That's not the direction I would normally go in. But it just, just fit for this perfectly. I said, this, this is it. So the reason why I have the um, cutting mat here is because now once I cut these out of the book, that's what this straight edge is for. Then I'm going to need to cut them to five by seven for this four by six. I'm thinking five by seven, but I might go four and a half by six and a half. So we'll, we'll see. But I'm only going to need this upper part here, you see. And the reason why I wanted the solid is because the papers are so busy, as you can see. And I was like, okay. And I was thinking, oh, but I don't have solid color cardstock in those particular shades. I have them in like neon and you know so unfortunately and I was out of my cream colored cardstock but this is going to work out perfectly. It's not going to be a problem at all. So I'm just going to have to find which is going to be a little bit um, not a problem because this part is going to be she'll glue that down into the scrapbook. So that's not a problem. So it's this going here and these pages are actually if you look at the spacing now, is actually perfect, so I won't even need to um, cut this length. It'll just be down here at the bottom. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to go through and cut out all these pages that I will need, and I'll be right back. I wanted to show you what I did that was really smart. Is I came in with my knife and I cut the stitches right here. And then now, look, I can just pull the pages right out so I don't have to cut each one of them. So I cut the first one. Then when I turned the, the page, there was the stitches. So I was like, you know what? I wonder if I can do that. So that's what I did. So now I will just pull these out. 
one by one. Okay, so now let's see here. This one is not wanting to come out. So what's going on with this? All right, no more stitches. Let me see. Maybe I missed a stitch. Okay, so now this part, so this first section, maybe that was the first signature, I was able to get it out very easily, so I have not missed any of the stitches. So now let's see what's going on here. Let me turn a few pages and see if there's another stitch line. And then all I have to do is cut that, and then we will be able to pull those out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here's another stitching, so probably another signature. Being careful to just cut this. Okay. So I don't know if you've ever thought to do this, or I've never seen anybody else do it this way, but it just came to me like, hey, wait a minute, why don't I just, you gotta be careful, I just put a little nick there, but I mean, you know. this side. Probably could use scissors, but okay, now let's see what we've got. Leave the knife down so we don't hurt ourselves. Okay, see, so I gotta put a little bit of effort into that to pull those out so they are sewn very snug. This is cool. Since I need 40 of them, I'm gonna take out quite a few of the pages. Okay, so this one is still solid. My goodness, I don't know what what's going on with that guy, but he does not want to come out of there. Okay, and here, let's see. All right, well, I'll just get us started with this. Look over to the side. I love that now that I now that I've discovered I can do that. So we're gonna take our pages and one by one now we're just going to cut. It doesn't matter as long as I have the solid, which is you know, actually maybe I could do it like this, but <laughs> ah, you're gonna see the okay if I turned it this okay if I turn it this direction to try to utilize, but it really doesn't matter because <clears throat> she's going to be gluing them down. So yeah, it doesn't matter what's on the other side. And too bad I've got to cover that up. Isn't that cute? So if I go down here like this, I might try to save some of these for future projects. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let me just see here now. All right. We're going to cut this right at his hat. Okay, now here's our card. So that's perfect. See, that's what I wanted. That's all I need to see. And it doesn't matter if you see that little tiny smidge, and that's fine. All right, that's perfect. And I love the spacing here. That'd be fine. And then it can lay on the 12 by 12 paper in the album so see it like this that's why I see I'm, I wanted to go with this color because no matter what is on it's going to be fine it's not going to scream I didn't want anything that's going to scream so it's a nice beige and it will go with everything and then she can do the same thing is um, so these will be the journal cards and then when I go through to do the photo mats it will just be the cream color I won't have to add anything extra and I was thinking the only thing I thought about was if I had black card stock oh I think that would just be gorgeous so I'm going to look through my stash otherwise I, th I will probably have to order some and I can order um, I don't know if, it, if it's all the time that Michael's had a deal going on for $4.99 same day delivery so I will look that up and see, and I don't know if it was a certain amount you had to spend. Um, otherwise, I'll order it from Amazon. I get, I'm get i an Amazon Prime member, so I get free delivery, so I, it's no big deal. Okay, so now we're going to take this, and we're going to do the same thing. So now this is going to be our guide, 
and then I know this is the size that I need to continue to cut. And okay, there's that one there that I wanted to save. Okay, yeah, so if I cut it here, then let's see, let's open him up. Okay, so obviously, see the way they did this? It's like it was it was tricky, you know. It was like they 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 said, "Ooh, we're not going to let those junk journal people." Use this paper. We're going to put a teddy bear on the other side. And then that will foil them because they're going to love this cute little muted thing. So, But I'm going to get around that. I just love this on the top of that. Oh, it's just gorgeous. So let me see if I bring it in here like this. See how pretty that would be? But that's not the theme for this journal. So anyway, all right. Just go with it, Marcia. Don't overthink it. See, this is what happens. We overthink a lot. We really do. All right, so I'm going to cut it here. And then I'm going to save this strip. I'll use it for something. Okay, so let me go through here and cut all these. Just wanted to show you that's part of it. And then we'll be back and put it all together. All righty, so now next step is the inking part of it. So this is not difficult at all. I am using two shades. I love to mix antique linen with vintage photo. All right, so I put a little bit on both. And then I'm just going to take and go around this edge first, the top edge. And you can use your ink pad directly, you know, so there's different ways to go about it. Take the darker and go across it here first. So obviously the vintage photos are the darker. I do have the walnut stain. So it just depends on how dark you want to go. I don't want to go that dark. So this, this will stay within the color range that I am seeing on the, the papers. All right, so we're just going to get all of these edges just adds a really nice interest to your pages when you find when you add the ink. I never was a believer in that until I started doing it. And when you look at the contrast between pages and projects you've done without the inking and you put it side by side with the inking, then you can see right away what a difference it makes. So, I mean, it's really worth it to go in there and put that on there. So these are still two pages together. I haven't cut them yet, so I'm going to wait and do that in a minute. But the inking has to go first. So now you see all of this, so I'm going to go ahead and ink the whole stack, and then I'll be right back, and then we'll glue all of these to them. All right, so I just have a few more to go. So here's all of the journaling cards done. And I'll show you how I glue them so that it, this is just my method, but whatever suits you, that's fine. So I just take my glue stick and I know that I'm gonna do, and leave about a quarter of an inch border. So this is how I do mine. gauge more or less where I'm going to be placing the paper and then I just fill in the middle and then I take my paper and I lay it on top and I'm looking from side to side and then I just lay it right on top. So that is easier than trying to glue this whole thing and then you get your fingers all messy. <clears throat> so this is the reason why I do it this way. It's because then it prevents me from having to be coming into contact with the glue. And 
and I am going, oh, this one I didn't cut, okay. I am going to go ahead and um, find some black cardstock, and I'm going to use that for the photo mounts. I think that's really going to add a nice contrast to the album and to the pages. So she'll have this nice cream and white for the journaling cards, and then she'll have black photo spots, and then she can just put her 4x6 pictures onto those, and it will look really, really pretty with it. Just that simple, quick, and easy. And if I, you, if you haven't seen my economy <laughs> set of glue sticks, I purchased them off of Amazon, and you don't ever have to worry about running out of glue sticks anytime soon with that pack. And I think there was, how many was in there? 24? I think there's 24. So I went around and I inked all of these edges. And the individual white pages as well. So if you notice that everything is really looking nice takes all of that starkness the whole blah so instead of it being blah it's now beautiful so look at the difference isn't that nice so this is what it would look like without the inked edges, and this is what it looks like with the inked edges. And the same thing for this. It's, it's just see how nice, see how that would look. When you put the inked edges together, it looks really, really nice. Okay, I have a few more of these to make. Uh, did a little over half, I need 40. And I think I've done like 25-ish. Once it grabs, it grabs. So make sure you get it where you want it to be before you put it down. All right, so then, then here's this stack now that's completed and I only need to do a few more so I'll go through and cut out okay so there's five more so let's go through the book again and we shall see if we can remove some more of the pages stand up and see if I can do it. Let me see if I can find another section where I need to cut it. Really, really nice journal pages here. Just so that you can see now what I'm doing if you didn't notice before. So let me see. I have a I have a tiny pair of scissors. Let me see if I can find those. Here they are. All right, let's see if this would do any better. You have to have a sharp pair like these that are very narrow, not a thick like our normal scissors would be.
Handy little things. Okay. Oh, we should be able to pull out. Yes, very good. There's all kinds of cute little quotes in this book. Teddies are father figures to children. They represent goodness, benevolence, and kindness, kindliness. Parents who replace this cozy, unharmful toy are a menace. <laughs> oh, beauty is in the eye of the bear holder. You just can't win at staring a staring contest with a teddy bear. Oh, brother. Yeah, there's all kinds of cute cutenesses in here. Kids would really enjoy those things. We didn't know this was going to be a deconstructing a book pages video too, but it is. So you're learning all kinds of techniques in this video today, so I hope you're enjoying that. And if you are, please subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos by leaving me a comment, sharing it on your social media. So that your friends can enjoy it as well and give it a like so that that helps me also to be found in search i really really appreciate it so thank you so much for being here with me today and so i will continue on my little journey of making these journal cards and in the next video i'm going to share with you more from my new uh, junk journaling journey and using a sketchbook and there's all kinds of terminologies out there for these different techniques now within I would still classify it within um, journaling or art journals so there's a sketchbook a glue book a glue book I would put it with a junk journal um, sketchbook is obviously art journaling so I'm, I'm jumping into the artist realm of things just to add a little bit more interest in my um, journals. So this dragonfly I sketched yesterday following a lady's video, very easy tutorial, and I copied it. So this is the copy version onto white cardstock, and then I colored it in with my Stampin' Up! markers. I have a little video showing you that. So I didn't show you my drawing it because I was sitting at my desktop watching her and telling us what to do, and then was drawing it with pencil. And then I used that uh, Manila art paper that I showed you that I had purchased. And so then the next video I will show you um, another flower that I did that turned out really nice. So my dragonfly, I'm happy with it. So I fussy cut it so I can put this in a journal. This is going to be um, a pocket in a journal. And I was thinking I almost might um, mirror image it right here and put foam dots underneath of it. So I'm, I'm toying <laughs> with that idea. Or I may just use it on the same page up in a corner like this and have it uh, so that they're both on the same page together. Or in a spread, this on one side, this on the other side, but I'm really enjoying the whole idea. I've been watching in our Facebook group, Junk Journal Junction, Valerie, and she has her art journal with her junk journaling, and so she's really been inspiring me. Of course, you know my daughter is an artist and son-in-law, so I've been around um, art, and I've done some drawing and painting pastels um, in my younger youth, in my 20s, so um, it's not like it's brand new to me, but I definitely need to watch someone do it and then I follow along. That's how I do it. I can't just look at an image. Now I do have a pillow with a dragonfly on it and it really 
shows you like magnified all of the segments of the dragonfly. So now that I followed her with this drawing, now I can watch, look at my magnification, which is, you know, huge size pillow. <laughs> and then I could sit there and say, oh yeah, this is, there's the eyes and there's the head. And then there's this little, you know, section in, this, in the shape. And then what was nice that she didn't point out in her drawing was this was the tail of the dragonfly from the pillow. So I don't know if this is in true life. I have to look it up to see is that what it is, but this is how it was on the pillow. So I just uh, changed it on here after, and then what I did too, which I'll show you in the video when I go to put this in an album, is I laminated one side. So you know how I showed you how to laminate one side of something. So this is still the paper here and matte laminate I used over here. Of course I signed it. And um, so now I'm, now I'm an artist. <laughs> of my own right. I'm so excited about that. So thank you for being here with me in this video today, and I will see you in the next video. Keep creating in the sunshine. Bye-bye.